Hi folks, my name's Guy and I've been doing pest control for a really, really long time and I've been licensed in several states. Now, I'm not licensed anymore and I'm retired, but I've looked at a number of pest control videos, how to apply the pesticide and take care of your home yourself that way. And I've noticed that many of them are really telling you to do it the wrong way. And so I thought I'd take a minute to really explain the proper way to do pest control yourself. Now, this is not gonna be a five minute video because you can't explain how to do proper pest control in five minutes. So if you wanna watch one of the five minute videos how to do it, then go ahead and do that. And when it doesn't work for you, please come back and watch this one and I'll show you guaranteed how it's gonna work 100% of the time. Now the first thing that you're gonna notice is most of those videos show you to use one of these. And these are great for solid applications like a wall surface or concrete. Uh, they work pretty well for that, although they're very time consuming. But if you have, if you look at an area like next to me, which is gravel, or you have a dirt area coming up next to the house, this really isn't gonna apply enough volume of pesticide to do a good job. So what I'm recommending for you today is if you're treating the exterior of your home, is you go to something more like this. Now I got this one on Amazon a few years ago, and I noticed they don't sell them anymore on Amazon for some reason, but you can get them uh, locally at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, Harbor Freight, I think, has these for about 20 or $25. Now the one I had, I like this one because it, comes, it has wheels on it, but if you have one like you get at Harbor Freight that does not have wheels, uh, you can kind of put them on yourself. Now this is a backpack sprayer and that's what they're selling and of course if you're, you're young and strong you can fill this thing up with four gallons of water and slap it on your back and you're good to go but I happen to be 70 years old and there is no way I'm filling this thing up with four gallons of water and putting it on my back. I am going to hurt myself if I do that. And so that's why I wanted one on wheels. But if you get one that is not on wheels, uh, all you need to do is just get yourself anything like this, like a hand pot. These are available for under $50, again, at Harbor Freight. And just put your backpack on it and get yourself a bungee cord like this and it's pretty simple to do just go ahead and slap a bungee cord around it and you'll be able to wheel this thing around no problem at all and not hurt your back okay so now a lot of these come marked in liters like this one is now I kind of can judge about what a gallon of water is but what I would recommend that you do is mark this so that you know what a gallon is and a gallon isn't okay so the way I like to do it is just take yourself a gallon of water and pour it into the unit like this Pretty simple. And then you can see where the watermark is, and all you do is to make a mark on it and just mark it one gallon. Then what you do is do that another three times, and you'll have a mark for each gallon. Now, why do you want to do that? Because you don't always need four gallons of pesticide. You might get to a point where you only just need one more gallon to finish the job. And you don't really want to be estimating with pesticide. So I'm going to stop the video right now and do the rest of them so you don't have to watch me filling this thing up. And then we'll proceed from there. Okay, so you can see how I did that. So now we have our markings of one, two, three, and four gallons so that we can measure out our pesticide correctly. 
So let me put the cap on this thing because they're not going to do any pesticide just yet. First of all, before you do any treatments at all, it's really, really important to use PPE, personal protective equipment. Let me show you what that is real fast. First thing you're going to want is some goggles because you definitely don't want this pesticide getting in your eyes. And believe me, when you're treating outside, you can get uh, some wind that can blow it in your face or you know, some drips or something like that. So you want to be careful. Same thing, I have here an N95 mask. These are the kind that you see in hospitals and stuff, but uh, this one was made specifically for more industrial use, you know, uh, and pesticide is a good one for it. I've had this one now for probably about eight years. So the only thing I use it for is pesticide. So, and I only use it for, you know, maybe a couple of hours at a time. So the mask lasts quite a long time. And finally, you want yourself some good gloves. You don't want the disposable ones that you get. They're just not going to do the job. You don't want anything that's going to leak. Again, these are chemical resistant gloves and you can see they go quite high up your hand and your arm because you don't want to get any pesticide in your skin. Now, I also recommend that you wear long pants and long sleeve shirts. It's Florida where I am and so it's a little hot out here so I'm not wearing long sleeve shirts today and I am not going to wear the personal protective equipment but that is because I am not going to use pesticide. I'm just going to demonstrate using plain old water because if I was wearing all this I wouldn't be able to talk to you. So to make this video a little more comprehensive I'm just going to simulate using pesticide. Now that brings up the question which pesticide should you use? I have two recommendations for you. The first is a product a lot of people tell you to use. It's called Talstar. It's a good product and you can use this inside or outside. Although I typically do not recommend the use of pesticides inside unless it's a last resort. <clears throat> but if you really want to get good control, uh, there's a better product. But I'd start with this. I'd start with the Talstar. It's a little safer than what I normally use, uh, but it doesn't always get the job done quite as well as what the next product I'm going to recommend. So give this a try. Give Talstar a try. This gets mixed one ounce per gallon, and you can apply this every three months at a gallon at, a, at an ounce per gallon. Okay, <clears throat> and it even has a neat little measuring device here, although. I typically do not use the measuring devices that they provide. I get myself a measuring cup from the dollar store and I find that that's more accurate and I just like using it better. <clears throat> now, if you don't get good results with this, then I bring out the Taurus SC. And this is what I always use. I just, this is my go-to product. Uh, I like it. This is really, Taurus SC is a termiticide. That means it's uh, designed mostly to kill termites. So one of the side advantages of this is there's a good chance if you use this like I'm telling you, you're probably not going to get termites either. We're not going to do a termite treatment. We're going to really be doing a treatment today for general pests. And this is labeled for general pests as well. So uh, some of this is labeled the leached into the ground near your foundation and you're probably going to get the target the termites as well <clears throat> because termites are subterranean means they have to return to the ground every day and so and that's why they use this they usually trench your house and that another story and they pour this in and the termites pass through and it kills them but if you put enough of this on the side of your house some of it is going to leach through and probably give you some termite protection although that is not the uh, we're not using that to treat termites today I'm probably going to do a video later on at another time to show you how to treat for termites and I have a way of doing that for about 50 bucks and it will get rid of any termites that you may have in your house. And it's a treatment that you can do every year for 50 bucks, never have a termite. But for now we're just going to talk about general pests. Here in Florida the things that we're really targeting are things like cockroaches that we have a big problem with 
American cockroaches also, people like to call them palmetto bugs in the south because they, even though they're cockroaches, it kind of makes it sound better that they don't have cockroaches. Uh, the American cockroach is typically an outside bug, but they do come inside from time to time when it gets too wet or too hot or something, and you find them in your house. This will stop them cold. Also, things like ants. We, we get a lot of uh, carpenter ants and things like that that like to nest inside the walls and the eaves and the attic and stuff like that. <clears throat> this does a good job for that. And we have another thing here. We have ghost ants. They're really, really tiny, tiny ants that you can hardly see. And this does a good job for them as well. So this targets just about any pest that you'd want and does a super job. But the only thing is this is a bit more hazardous to use than the, the Taurus. That, I'm sorry, than the, uh, that, than the uh, Talstar. Also, <clears throat> don't ever, ever, under any circumstances, use this inside your house. This is strictly an exterior pesticide and it, again, it's a little more hazardous to use. You don't want to put this inside your house, okay? So, this product is labeled to use as a standard pesticide, but unlike the Talstar, you have to be a little more careful because if you mix this full strength, you're only allowed to use it every six months. If you want to use it every three months, you have to kind of mix it half strength. So uh, it also has a little measuring device. And you, if, you, if you look closely at this, I'll, I'll give you a little close-up of it. It's marked 0.8 ounces and 0.4 ounces. The 0.8 ounces is if you're doing the six-month treatment. The 0.4 ounces is if you're doing the three-month treatment. Obviously, the 0.8 ounces is going to do a better job than the four ounces, but you're not supposed to do the 0.8 every three months. Okay, just so you know. All right, so let's get started. Let me show you how to do a proper pest treatment. We're going to assume, and don't forget, you know, one of the mistakes people make, they, you have four gallons of water here. You don't want to put 0.8 for four gallons, because remember, you got to do this four times. So it means you need 3.2 ounces uh, if you're mixing this full strength. Are you with me? Okay, so let me actually get into the actual technique of how we're going to do this. Uh, I'm 70 years old, so if I can stand up now, that's going to be a miracle in itself. I'll be with you in just a moment. <clears throat> okay, we're going to pretend that this jug of water is actually one of our pesticides because I don't want to work with live pesticide today because I'm not wearing any PPE. So I've emptied my applicator, my, and this is battery powered by the way. So the first thing I want to do, I don't want to put the water in first. I want to put the pesticide in first. It's low foaming and so I shouldn't have a problem. I'm going to pretend I'm mixing this full strength and so since it's 0.8 ounces per gallon, 4 eighths is 32, so that's 3.2 ounces per gallon. I wish they would have diluted this so it was like even ounces like they uh, did with the Talstar. That makes it a lot simpler, just 4 ounces, you're good to go. So you got to do a little bit more math with the Taurus SC. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is uh, measure out. 3.2 ounces and put it in and then what I want to do, the reason I'm putting that in first is because if you put four gallons in, I'm only going to mix one, uh, four gallons, uh, if you put four gallons of water and then you try to shake this, I'm sorry, I'm getting down. if you try to shake this thing uh, it's kind of heavy to do. So if you put the pesticide in first, the water from the hose is going to kind of mix it up for you so you don't have to be busy shaking it. So I'm just going to fill this with water. And of course, again, remember you're wearing your, you're wearing your PPE right now, so if anything splashes up, you won't get hurt. Okay, I didn't quite put four, 
four gallons to make it easier for me. But we're going to pretend again that I filled this with four gallons of water. Okay, folks, uh, let's make sure that we have our cap screwed on tight. Okay, now you may have noticed if you're really observant that I'm wearing different clothes than I did at the beginning of this video. And that's because I kind of ran out of time the other day when I was doing this. And so I have different clothes on. Now, before I go any further, uh, I want to make to say a word about liability. Since I am not a licensed pest controller, you need to understand that uh, any of the recommendations that you take today are at your own risk and liability. I cannot be responsible if you get into any problems because you did something that I recommend. Always, always make sure that you read and follow all label directions. Uh, so if something on the label disagrees with something that I'm telling you, you should follow the label. Okay? Let me talk to you a little bit about cost. I seem to recall I paid about $90 for a 78 fluid ounce container of the Taurus SC. And I probably paid about the same, maybe a little more for the Talstar. Uh, but this is what I typically use is the Taurus SC. And I just treated the house. One of the, again, one of the reasons that I'm in different clothes today is because I had to stop and uh, shooting the video from last time and start today. But one of the things that I did was I actually treated my house and my daughter's house who lives next door. And my house, I ended up using 20 gallons of finished pesticide. And they say, well, that's a lot of pesticide. And this is $90 for a container. That sounds pretty expensive. But stop and think about it. You're only using point eight ounces per gallon, right? So that means this container makes about 97 gallons of finished pesticide. So you round that to, you know, let's say roughly 100 gallons, right? And it takes me 20 gallons to treat the house. That means I can treat the house five times with this container. Right? And since at that dilution rate, you're only treating every six months, that means I'm going to treat two and a half years for about a hundred bucks. Right? So that's not bad when you stop and think that a pest controller is going to charge you about $25 a month or $300 a year, and they're only going to come out every three months. So it's really pretty inexpensive when you stop and think about it, okay? So it's you know, maybe $40 a year as opposed to $300 a year. So you save a lot of money if you do this yourself. Okay, folks, here I am again. Uh, remember, I'm only using water, and that's why I'm not using any protective equipment. Now, what you want to do is catch up on the foundation or the side of the house about two feet. You don't need a whole lot of pesticide. But when you're treating the gravel here, or if you have dirt going up to it, you need to use a lot more than most videos show you. Because most of your pests are living right in here where the wall and the dirt kind of meet. That's where they're breeding. And so you need to kind of really soak it in there where those things meet. And even the gravel here, or if you have dirt, Give this a good soaking. Because if you just give it this little spritzing like they show you, it's not enough to get the job done. And here with it, where the uh, trim pieces, catch that too. Again, if you're doing, I'm only going to do this part, but I'm just showing you if it's dirt, do the same thing. Put a lot on it. And on your windows, uh, I, always, I don't want to get any on the glass, so I just catch the bottom sill, and then I go around just on the concrete, and that's done. Okay, if you 
have a gate like this, um, wasps love to live in these gates. So what I always do is I give them a little shot, like right in here. And that'll stop any wasps that you have. Now, if you have a wooden fence that meets the house like this, great place for carpenter ants to be getting into your house. So you definitely want to treat both the side of the house where it meets the gate, uh, with the fence rather, where it meets the fence and catch it pretty good. And if you have any chases like this, like I have, oh, they don't, not always sealed, so you want to catch that entire thing as well. Also, what I do is I also catch my fascia boards around the soffits here. And if you have any cast, I have a crack right here. I just shoot some pesticide right in. Always stand away, by the way, so that you don't get dripped on. And then you want to catch just a little bit under the eaves. And that's it, just all around the house. Okay? And that's going to stop brown recluse spiders, wasp, anything that's going to be nesting up in your eaves. Now, if you have a gabled roof, uh, you're going to need a ladder to get up there. Always work away from the pesticide, so start shooting it here, and then work down toward the ladder, and move the ladder. Don't, don't let it drip on you. You don't want to get this pesticide on you. So always be careful like that. All right, don't forget your air conditioning units either. Uh, you want to catch around the pad, again about two feet out, and make sure you catch behind it. And if you have a chase, like I do, a lot of times these are hollow, catch up in here too. Catch around the all the unit. Okay, if you have bushes, you also want to treat them. I just give it a little spritz on the sides and the top, both sides of the bush. But at, really at the base where the roots are, you want to give that a really good shot of your pesticide. Just like you would near the foundation of the house. Same thing with the trees. You want to catch all around those as well. Okay, for your entrance doors, you don't want to use too much pesticide, just a light spray will do. Right at the bottom of the door and go all the way around. And then catch, same thing as you would around the building, but we have concrete here. So we don't need quite so much pesticide, just a light spritz all the way around and you're pretty much good to go. Okay, uh, for your garage doors, pretty simple. Same deal as the entrance door. Just catch up the garage door a little bit. And again, about two feet out on the concrete and around the door. And that's all there is to it. I happen to have a sidewalk that goes around a good part of my house. So if you're going to treat a sidewalk, or if you're going to treat the house, you definitely don't want to forget about the sidewalk. And so if you're going to treat the sidewalk, make sure that you catch a good amount of pesticide right here. Because your pests are really going to be breeding right where the dirt meets the concrete. And it's the same thing by your house, right where the soil meets the side of the house. You really want to get that soaked in. So do that on your, where your, your sidewalks meet the ground, okay? And don't forget to catch the expansion joints in your, in your sidewalk as well. And that's going to follow through with the driveway as well, which I'm going to go out there in a minute and show you the driveway also. Okay, here on the driveway, it's the same thing as the sidewalk. You want to catch the expansion joints 
and right next to the driveway, you want to flood in a pretty good amount of your pesticide right in here because that is where your bugs are actually going to be breeding. They have, if you have these electrical boxes, phone boxes, in the net, cable, all that sort of thing, uh, it's a great place for bugs to get into. So you want to just go around them. Don't electrocute yourself, but uh, spray around them a little bit all the way down to the ground. And if you have any penetrations going through, uh, make sure you catch those as well. Now, I don't have a whole lot of penetrations in this house, but I try to keep them sealed as much as I can. I have one little opening right here. But if you have pipes going through the house anywhere, electric wires, you name it, you always want to make sure you soak them pretty good because bugs definitely like to get into those places. Don't forget to treat your sheds either because you don't want any bugs in your sheds as well. So again, it's the same thing. You're going to treat up two feet, catch the grass around it, catch all around the door, you know, these edges here anywhere, get around the windows, same exact treatment as you're going to do with the house, but do it to all your outlying buildings like sheds. I've pretty much shown you how to treat just about everything you could possibly want to treat. Now it's real important to understand you're not quite finished with the job just yet though. It's really important before you stop to number one, clean up your equipment. Do not leave any unused pesticide in the container. Hopefully you've planned this thing out pretty well so your pesticide applicator or sprayer is empty. But if it isn't, always make sure that you take the time to dump out any unused pesticide. And then, after you dump out the pesticide, make sure that you rinse this out at least a couple times. Put about a gallon of water, shake it up, dump it out, put another gallon of water, and then run it through the sprayer, just so that there's no pesticide left in the hose or anything. And then dump it out. Make sure your sprayer is nice and clean. Couple reasons for that. Number one, you might forget what you have in the sprayer. You may be using this sprayer for weed control or something like that, and you want to remember what you actually have in the sprayer. Also, like me, if you use more than one type of pesticide, you may forget what you actually have in the sprayer. And number two, and probably even more importantly, is this uh, pesticide can sometimes, or, or weed control products like Roundup, can congeal in here and actually get lumpy. And so when you shoot it through your wand, it can clog everything up. So you want to make sure that this is nice and clean when you're finished. Finally, when you're all finished with your pest treatments for the day, always take a shower. I don't care who you are, you are probably going to get some of the mist from the sprayer on your skin some kind of way. Even if you're wearing a long sleeve shirt, you might get some on your, you know, the overspray on your neck if it's a little breezy or something, or catch some drips. You don't want any of this pesticide on you at all. And also, as quickly as you can, you know, after you take a shower, be sure that you wash the clothes that you were wearing because there is going to be pesticide on those clothes and you don't want to keep that pesticide in the house. So run out those clothes through the washer and take good care of them. Uh, finally, uh, with your gloves that you're wearing, after you wash out your container, make sure you wash the gloves too. Just take some running water with the hose and wash off the gloves and clean out your measuring equipment and anything like that. Make sure there's no pesticide on anything that you've been using. Okay? That's it for me, folks. Sorry it took so long to do this video, but I wanted to get it right and make sure you were going to get really great results. If you like what you saw, give me a like. And I'm really going to try to get some more pest videos together for you, like termite treatments and maybe fire ants and some other things. So until then, take care.